Well, we're back to the GSL Model Car Championship. Oh, what a championship it was. This this is a, a contest that evolved over, I think, like 40 years. Mm. Um, even in its earliest days, it was well known as an international competition and very rapidly evolved into the most prestigious uh, competition for model car builders. Well, I'm just looking at these, it's like, what? I can't believe these are just models. This this one that was held in 2023 was the last one ever. Uh, and that's sad. That's sad, but I guess all things come to an end. But uh, the, the good news there is people came from all over the world to be part of the very last one. And the level of competition really showed that. It's really interesting to see the full spectrum of automotive subjects. Just unbelievable. Oh, the detail. I mean, you'd think these are real full-size cars. It's just been kind of shrunk down. Right, and, and just every conceivable thing from a junkyard dog diesel truck to, well, this is a, a mail delivery it vehicle is. from I, the 1920s. Frosty the snowman. <laughs> Just absolutely amazing, the, the subject matter here. Right. While this represents the state of the art in model car building in the 21st century, right. it's, it's necessary to understand the history of model cars as a hobby that it really uh, hit its stride in the 1960s when it was bigger than video games. Right. One of my favorite cars from back then was Monogram's Big T, and this week's build is, is sort of a bringing together of two of my favorite subjects, an Ed Roth car and a 1-8 scale hot rod, very much like the Big T. Right. In fact, some of the parts used here in the build are out of a Big T. Oh, really? Yeah, well, mostly just the rear tires. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but still. This is the original car. This is Ed Roth's Mysterium. Oh, and he named it quite uh, well. Yeah, what an interesting car. And, and this is Ed. He built the car in 1963, so this is a very young Ed. Yes. And uh, just an absolutely amazing car built just entirely for the show car circuit, but it had twin Ford 390 engines in it. Twin engines now, one for each wheel. Or what? <laughs> well, it was kind of a thing that some of the drag racers were trying to do back then, and so Ed thought it would just be a fun thing to do to put twin engines in this thing. The problem with that being that I don't think he completely took into account the weight of two giant FE blocks, and the frame couldn't really support it. And every time he took it to a car show, it broke the frame. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I can see why. Yeah, well, never mind trying to drive it. Just yeah. putting it on a trailer and bouncing it up and down would break the frame. Yes. And so uh, he fought with this car and fought with it. He only showed the car for perhaps three years, and then he just gave up and started parting it out, broke the body up, and threw the whole thing away, and that was the end of the Mysterium. Wow. That's really unfortunate. Sad, yeah, sad. But a couple of different people decided that it would be fun to recreate the car full size. Right. And uh, one of these cars we've seen is in the Galpin collection in Southern California. Right. But this one was built by Jeffrey Jones in, uh, in Bakersfield, California. And he just thought that would be a really fun thing to build the Mysterian full size, exactly the same technique that Ed Roth used. 
and try to reinforce the frame in such a way that it wouldn't break. Right, and use an aluminum block. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, his solution was one of the two engines is just an empty shell. Oh, there you go. And that reduced the weight dramatically, and then that and reinforcing the frame, knowing that that was going to be a problem, means that this car could actually be driven. Oh, cool. That's pretty neat. I actually had an opportunity to talk to Ed Roth about this car, and uh, he said his goal was to make something totally asymmetrical and something that didn't look anything like a car. Well, I think he was successful. I think he was pretty, and it is all offset to one side or the other, and it uh. is pretty much asymmetrical. And he said as he was building it, uh, he carved the whole body out of plaster. And he said if it started looking the slightest bit conventional, he just took a sledgehammer to that and redid it. I'm glad he didn't redo the tail lights. They look like Ford tail lights. <laughs> They're good. And yet they are completely unique. Look at yeah. this. Twin tachometers for the twin engines. There you twin go. oil pressure gauges. Yep. The complexities of having two giant V8 engines in a single car this way. He should have called it the Siamese instead of the Mysterium. <laughs> anyway, not long after building it, he was offered uh, too much money to turn down to put this in a private collection and museum. And so he sold it. Yeah. So he decided to recreate it again. Oh. This time in one eighth scale. You know, that's what I do. Try to recreate something much smaller. Well, it, it parks a lot easier. Yeah, it sure does. It can park on a <laughs> shelf. And as he'd already built one full size, he knew exactly how to go about building the miniature version. And so he set about building this in that, that size, one eighth scale, the same size as Monogram's Big T, which I think is incredibly appropriate since the, both of those cars came out about the same time. Ed Roth built the Mysterion at about the same time that Monogram released the Big T. Uh, it was one of the first cars I saw when I opened up Rod Custom Magazine as a little kid and I fell in love with it watching, uh, they did three articles while they were building it and I fell in love with it and then Ed showed it for about two or three years and it kept falling apart on the trailer so he just tore it up and threw it out and so uh, then I was obsessed for the last 50 years of reproducing the car so I built a number, uh, full size one. And I built this 1.8 scale to keep the memory alive of the car. So where's the full size one now? Chesterfield, Michigan, Stalls Automotive Museum. And it's a great automotive museum, but go there for the musical instruments too. He's got some incredible musical instruments. I'm talking musical instruments the size of this building. Love to see that, and I'd love to see the full size version of this. Now yours ran, correct? Yes. Because Ed's never really ran. Uh, Sort of. In my book, I, I cite a couple of instances where it, people say that it did run. I've got a picture of him at a show with a gas can sitting behind the car. He's got the air clean off a carburetor. Looks like he's trying to get it to run. So I think it ran for a while, but it was so heavy, kept breaking the frame and everything. They just took all the guts out of the engines to try to make it lighter. But it just was never destined to live. And it even so here's Jeffrey's build book. He put together quite a complicated build book showing how he went about building this because just sitting there looking at the model, you'd never guess. It's interesting that his technique for building the body was exactly the same way as building the full size, except that instead of carving the body out of plaster, he carved it out of sugar pine. Wow. That's a lot easier That's work. a lot, e yes. But yes. then the same exact technique of making molds and laying it up in fiberglass. Here's uh, one of the molds for making the main body shell. And then he used a finer fiberglass cloth and just laid it up in fiberglass exactly the same way he did on the full size car. Wow. Then of course, because it's a model, uh, those pieces could be glued together and the seams blended. Look, here's the tail lights. Oh, look at that. You were mentioning, but yeah. look at how those are made with uh, plastic resin castings and brass pieces. Here's the brass frame, oh my goodness. which had that tendency to break on the original. 
Uh, he made a, a jig for doing the soldering, which if you're doing brass work is really the best way to do brass work so that everything is held nice and square as you're building it. So this picture answered a big question to me, and that's how do you tie two V8 engines together? I can't even imagine. I mean, look at the complexity of just, first of all, getting your float carburetors standing upright when the engines are tilted over like that. There's so much complexity in putting twin engines in there, but how do you tie them together? And this picture answers that question. It has two differentials. And then uh, one engine is connected to one gearbox, the other to the other, and they're welded together in the middle. Well, I was just thinking that, but you know, if you killed the engine on your carburetor and it dies, you have one engine, what do you do? Go around in circles? Yeah, you have a skid steer at that point. <laughs> Now here's building up the wheels and tires. Uh, because the rear tires are just simply out of a big T, that's easy, but the front wheels and tires are a completely different setup. So he cut down a motorcycle tire, a one eight scale motorcycle tire, made a mold, and then cast the proper tire out of a soft urethane rubber. Oh, neat. The engine, uh, being a FE block, you have uh, problems there and also because of the customization that the carburetors have to stand upright, a lot of uh, resin casting was done there. And then the header pipes are simply built out of uh, engineering shapes like Plastruct makes. Then all of these parts needed to be chrome plated, so he mounted everything to trees and sent the whole thing off to a chrome plating shop. And they did the chrome plating. He said the chrome plating for this car cost the same as on the full size car. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I would imagine. <laughs> of course, anytime you're building a model car or for that matter, a full size car that's a, an exposed engine hot rod, the detailing of the engine is so critical. Right. And all of the wires and linkages and fuel lines, everything's gotta be present here because it's, it's right out there in front of everybody. Right. And a complete working front suspension, uh, all out of brass for strength, and uh, just, just a fabulous, fabulous build. Right. Now this is a fun thing. A lot of these early hot rods, they would attempt to put sort of mythological engineering in them like this sound system. In 1963, you just really couldn't do that because there were no transistors. No. Everything ran on tubes. And this car even has a television set. Well, look at there. <laughs> so it has to have a power inverter and Ed found this French-made television that he could fit into the car. And uh, so what Jeffrey's done here is completely recreate the French television set. And uh, it looks pretty darn convincing in there. Except for the antenna <laughs> and the lead-in wire. <laughs> yeah, you got to have rabbit ears with tinfoil yeah, on them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh, Ed originally found this French-made Delmonico television set that was small enough to fit in the car. Back then, really small television sets were very difficult to come by. And expensive. And expensive. And there's an actual Delmonico. Uh, Jeff found one to put in his full-size car, searched high and low, and had to pay a fortune for it. Ah. And it was very heavy. I imagine. But there's a tube-type Delmonico, I believe it's a 9-inch screen, black and white television set. Wow. <laughs> How fun is that? Oh, it is. 
Anyway, this was just a really fun project for us to come across. Oh, it is. It ties so neatly into our fascination with Ed Roth and Rat Fink and eight scale hot rods and uh, all of this in the middle of the world's most competitive model car competition. Oh, right. How, how oh. could it get better than this? Exactly. Well, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please become a subscriber. And in fact, if you liked this video, consider uh, hitting the like button. The easy way to subscribe is with the upcoming blue button. Zoink, right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. See you then. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.